Oh, what is up guys? I am super excited for this video. The LMT that some of you guys have been messaging me asking for a video on uh, because this is not a traditional commercially available LMT that you can get. So I'm gonna give you guys some details and some insight in the behind the scenes of this. Uh, and honest to God, I'm winging this whole thing. I don't even know what I'm gonna be doing today. I have an idea. Uh, this intro, I'm winging it. So if I start going off in rabbit holes, I apologize, but we're going to roll with this. So it's going to be cool. I'm super excited to get this video to you guys finally. Uh, those of you that have been following me on Instagram for at least a year have seen this rifle and um, have asked me like, yo, man, what is that? What's going on? And this, I replaced my Seekins SP-10M uh, with this. And so that was around that time frame that this all uh, ensued. And so in my most recent video that I posted like a couple days ago, I had did a update video on my life and the new job that I got and everything which is at Knight's Armament. So at the end of this month, I'm starting, I'm gonna to move to Florida and start up as a full-time employee at Knight's Armament, doing some government stuff there. And I'll just leave it at that. But in that video, I did say that ironically, this LMT rifle got me the job at Knight's Armament in that if you watch this YouTube video, it'll kind of make sense. Uh, hopefully get this, today's April 8th. Actually, the eclipse is gonna to happen today in a few hours. Um, but that's the filming of this. Hopefully by the end of this week, this video will be live. We'll see. I don't even know what I'm doing. So let's get into it. This LMT is the L129A2. So you might've seen, I know, I think it was the firearms blog that posted something and showed this rifle. I was like, hey, I know that rifle. <laughs> so the UK adopted the L129A2 last year to replace their A1s. Uh, so around the time that I was doing this, or doing the contract with LMT on this rifle to help them do all this stuff, it was f it was the same rifle that they already were fielding and looking at, but it was for a different, more specialized unit, units. You guys could probably already know who I'm talking about. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so they resubmitted this rifle. That's kind of to my understanding, but basically it's the L129, L129A2. So we'll get into it. What's my relationship with LMT? Let's get over that. So I have a, prof a professional working relationship with LMT. Uh, when I was with Modern Day Sniper last year, uh, shortly starting, I got sent out by Modern Day Sniper to assist LMT. Well, LMT requested uh, someone, one of us, and my boss is friends with uh, Carl Lewis. He did some stuff with him in the past. And so they reached out asking if we'd support them again. And I'm a bolt gun guy, but I'm also the ga I was also the gas gun guy for uh, MDS. And so they sent me out to go assist LMT with this. I was like, all right, cool. I don't know what's happening, but I guess I'm just gonna show up and tell me what to shoot and I'll do it. And so they sent me this, literally this rifle. Well, at least the upper, because the, the lower has LEI markings, the, the real one, and I can't own that. Um, but this upper is literally what was sent to me as a familiarization rifle. So they sent this to me in Ohio I, a week before I flew out for the actual uh, testing where the contract was going, was undertaking, and uh, actually that phase of the contract because that was the shooting package that I was needed for. And uh, so this rifle was pretty sick. When they sent it to me, I shot it. Got some rounds down. I was like, all right, I like it. I'm impressed. And a week later, they met me in Texas when I flew out there at Accuracy First Ranch, uh, Todd Hodnett and Colby Hodnett. And they brought a couple of these rifles there, but this was the demo one that they had sent me prior. I'm glad this wasn't the one that I was using at the actual uh, trials because I probably burned the hell out of those barrels. <laughs> so. I'll get into a little bit of the details of what in, what ensued in that time frame, but it's pretty cool stuff, man. So that's my relationship with LMT. I don't. I did do something else with them a couple months ago. I assisted them again, essentially doing the same thing in Crane, Indiana, at uh, Crane's headquarters, and uh, that was for the MRGGA contract, and I was their shooter for that. I don't know what's going on with that. This video isn't about that either, so I'll just leave it there. But so I show up to Texas and we start shooting the stuff. That whole phase was supposed to be, if I recall, like five days long. And then the different manufacturers showed up and they had their shooter 
shooting the stuff. And we had a certain course of fire that we had to do uh, and certain time frames and timelines that had to be met, certain accuracy requirements or precision requirements, I should say, for group size. And uh, ended up, as long as all shooters were on the same page and were like, hey, are you good? Are you good? Are you good? Whatever. You want to move on? Cool. Yeah, let's do it. And we're all in cahoots with it. Then we can move on to the, ne the next phase. So it got to the point, all of us were like, yeah, let's wrap this up, man. So we knocked it out in about two or three days. And I literally had a gallon of water with me and like between courses of fire, just hosing it down and cooling it all off and getting back to it. And the rifle performed really, really well. So it involved 100 meter stuff, uh, some 100 meter work with the 308. That was the last time we used the 308. Uh, the rest of the stuff for distance was with the 6.5. This is the 16 inch 308 barrel, and this is the 18 inch 6.5 barrel. So, all the distance stuff was performed with uh, the 6.5, and that involved numerous five round groups on paper at 500 meters, 600 meters, 700 meters, 800 meters, 900 meters, and 1,000 meters, all on paper. Uh, yeah, it was, it was weird, but. <laughs> We, uh, we did really well. LMT, the, uh, LMT actually got a, we got a, I say we, it's, I didn't have anything to do with the rifle, it was just the trigger puller. Uh, LMT uh, was the top performer in that phase. I don't know if where it's gone from there. I've, I'll talk to them and see what's going on. But at least in that phase, LMT performed uh, the best, but uh, those guys took the top two, which was uh, LMT and uh, Knights. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say in terms of the contract and they're going to do their thing and figure out what they want to go with. But yeah, so that was cool. Now how this rifle got me the job <laughs> at Knights now, just to touch on that, Knights was there. I met uh, my soon to be boss there. I'm not going to name drop him. And he was shooting for Knights, a really cool guy. He did really, really well as also. And I made friends with him. And next thing you know, I was in Florida like two weeks later. Uh, for personal stuff, but he was like, yeah, come by and I'll give you a tour of the Knights Museum. And I was like, oh, sick. So went there, made buddy buddy with him. Fast forward a year, uh, I got laid off from Modern Day Sniper in January, and I reached out to him just seeing if he had insights in the industry, like, hey, you know anyone hiring, anything like that. Long story short, he hired me for a certain type of position that is in the company that I'll be, I'll be wearing a lot of hats there, and I'm really excited about it. So I'll be doing a lot of international travel and things like that. That being said, I don't think I'll be shooting for LMT anymore if more of these contracts come up, obviously, but whatever. So as far as the rifle goes, that's kind of the backstory and the relationship with it. I know you guys are probably like, man, will you just get to the rifle already? But I feel like there's some good information there because this isn't a commercially available rifle, so now you have a little bit of insight on it. So a typical Mars H you'll see, a lot of times they usually have the 20 inch barrels and five slot M lock, so it'll stop pretty much like right about here. Uh, this is a seven M lock, which I love these. It's really nice, really clean look, especially with the 16 inch barrel in the Huxworks 762 Ti. It goes like right up to it, it's so nice. Barrel change is stupid easy. I'm not gonna talk about how to do it or show you in the video because you know how YouTube is and it's gonna just flag the video or remove it. So I'll have to do that stuff off camera. But today I'm gonna do some shooting and accuracy testing with, or precision testing I should say, and velocity testing with different types of 308 and then I'll put the 6.5 on and you do different types of 6.5 ammo. So let's talk about what the ammo is that I'm gonna be using. I'll get more into the rifle, but while I'm on the barrel and ammo concept, we'll get to that. So for the 308, I'll be running the tried and true Federal Gold Medal Match 175 Sierra Match Kings. And I got a box of this AAC 168 grain Sierra Match King. I'm gonna try that out, that out as well. Now, Federal, it's kinda of known that they have, they're pretty notorious for slower velocities. Uh, when I chronoed this, I think last week, I think it was getting like 2420 feet a second out of the 16 inch. We'll see what's going on today. Uh, but when I go to shoot this stuff at distance, one thing I want you guys to understand is not just <clears throat> like the, the initial muzzle velocity, but what's the spread in terms of like extreme spread. So when you're trying to stretch something at distance, like for this, it, the Kestrel says I need to true this at uh, 690 yards uh, because it's really slow and it's a 308. Uh, now let's say I have a 30 feet a second extreme spread. A general rule of thumb 
is for about every 10 feet a second uh, at truing distance is about a 0.1 spread on the plate. That's kind of a general rule of thumb. So even if I do everything right at 690-ish yards, 700 yards in that ballpark, and let's say my ammo has a 30 feet a second spread, I could see probably somewhere around about a 0.3 vertical spread just in the target. <coughs> Sorry. Allergies, guys. It's really killing me today. So that's what I'm going to use for the 308. For the 6.5, I have the 140 ELD match from Hornady. I have some AAC 140 grain Sierra Match Kings. And I have some left of this Eagle Eye uh, that they gave me. Of I, If I recall, these were 140 burgers as well. So I'm going to use that and we're going to see what happens. Full disclosure, um, I don't. I may or may not, I don't fully know if I maybe messed up the barrel on the 6.5 a little bit because the original, the Huxworks muzzle device that I installed on here, the first one I took off and put on the 308. But that one, when it was on here, I bought a new one and put it on here for this barrel in particular. But that one, when I originally installed it, um, I, I put all my body weight into torquing that thing on to try and time it. And so that may or may not have done something. I don't know if it did or didn't. So just keep that in mind, like if the groupings are like, meh. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I am working on getting some custom made barrels for this rifle to take it to the next level. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. Uh, my gunsmith, Spartan Precision, he's gonna do these up for me, hopefully. <clears throat> hopefully around the end of this year, maybe early next year, I'll have those barrels done. I know some of you guys are probably gonna put in the comments like, <coughs> damn, excuse me. Like, hey, why don't you go with, like, D. Wilson? He does a lot of LMT stuff. And that's correct, he does. Uh, I did reach out to him. Uh, he answered a couple questions, but I still had more stuff that I kind of wanted answered and before pulling the trigger and spending the money, and I didn't fully understand, like, what his process was, whatever the case was, and kind of, like, he just... The communication wasn't what I was hoping it would be, so I kind of just cut my losses there. I was like, whatever, I'm just going to go to my smith anyways. He'll do it for free. And he, my smith doesn't do gas gun stuff. He has... And from what I hear, he does pretty well at it, but he only does it for like friends and sponsored shooters. So luckily he's gonna do it for me because I consider myself both. <laughs> Mark, if you're seeing this, we're friends. And so hopefully whatever groupings we get today, they'll be even better uh, whenever I get those custom barrels. Now, let's see, that's it for the barrels. Uh, the, oh, one thing with that is when you change the barrels on this, the downside is any M-lock accessories you need to remove. Uh, because the barrel extension diameter is just too fat that it'll hit the screws. Kind of a downside, but whatever. Uh, the 762 Hux can, I'm loving this can so far. I got it from Tag Firearms. They gave me a discount, uh, full disclosure. I'm running a Really Right Stuff Arca Rail here. I'm sponsored by Really Right Stuff as well. Uh, the Leupold Mark V 3.6 to 18 with a Tremor 3 reticle was sent to me by Leupold. The Badger Condition 1 mount. Also sent to me by Badger and Flatline Ops Bubble Level. They make really solid levels. I'm sponsored by him. This was sent to me as well. I did buy the gun, but at an extremely discounted rate. So I'll just leave it at that. <coughs> Some modifications I made. I changed the gas tubes to Black River Tactical Gas Tubes. My favorite gas tubes for tuning a weapon system, hands down. Um, the LMTs are notoriously over-gassed, I will say that. And so... Kind of a downside, but for what they do with military contracts, that stuff needs to run. So I get it. Um, but I changed those out. It's running really nice. I put a Geisley SSP in here. Changed this to a Magpul K2 grip, a Radian, uh, is it Talon? Or Ret whatever. Or the Radian Safety. Um, and then the buffer spring itself is a tub spring. I haven't really done extensive testing to know if it's better or not, but people highly suggested it. So I threw one in here, and it's in here now. It's a really long uh buffer spring but yeah so interested in showing you guys how it performs today testing different ammo i might hook the trigger cam up and make that the second point of view for you guys so you guys can kind of see how that performs uh through what i'm seeing but winds are this is a tricky range if you guys remember the last video and winds are picking up a bit today and running a slow 308 we'll see how that goes and these targets are not super forgiving some of these uh but we're gonna roll with it and we're gonna see how this goes i hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, yeah, let's get to it.
Okay, so now we're gonna start off this accuracy testing or precision testing with the 308 175 Sierra Match King. And I got the Garmin Chrono on and we'll see how it does. So I like to do 10 shot groups, especially with gas guns, because it tells me a little bit more of the story. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not gonna show you guys the shooting process of everything. It's more gonna be some B-roll, maybe a little bit of talking here and there, but I'm not gonna just have 10 round groups the entire time. Uh, for you guys to watch because that just gets boring. So let's get started. All right, average of 24.17. Uh, let's see, min was 23.86, max was 24.48. Uh, I fired that first shot and it was low, so I came up 1.6 and it was pretty much on from there, and then I fired a 10 round group. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it here. I'm not gonna float any turrets yet, it's just to kind of be in the general area to then give you guys some groupings and be able to show you on paper. So I'm gonna let this cool for a bit and then I'll hook up the chrono for the uh, AAC 168 SMKs and we'll see how that does. All right guys, so now we got the AAC, 10 rounds of this, 168 grain, and uh, see how this performs. And I'll give you guys the velocities as well and then we'll talk about the, I'll grab the target and we'll talk about it uh, before changing barrels and testing the 6.5. Oh, can you throw me my bag? <clears throat> Thanks. Beautiful. Well, so far that's three in one hole. All right. Well, let's see. So it's faster. Average was 25.22, a min of 25.05, max of 25.39. Uh, so that's an ES of about 35-ish, 34, 35. Um, so like I said, if I'm shooting this at distance then, and I end up trying to validate every 10 feet a second as a rule of thumb is about a 0.1 spread vertically on target at truing range. That truing range is going to depend on the different cartridge and rifle and atmospheres that you're doing, but whatever it is, about 10 feet a second is going to be about a 0.1 vertical spread at truing distance, roughly. So I could expect to see that even if I'm doing everything perfectly, I would see about a 0.3 spread at truing range for this, roughly. So we'll go ahead, I'll grab the target in and uh, I'll measure them with a ballistic arc ballistic x app and uh we'll see what the group size are and yeah all righty guys so we're back here uh down range this is about 100 yards away uh, i didn't have my ruler for a one inch reference but i'm pretty sure the outer part of this is pretty much exactly an inch so is what it is uh but with that it, based on the group size that ballistics x was telling me I'm like pretty positive that's one inch then because that's about exact like what I was expecting. So this is the 175. Let's go right here. This is the 175 Sierra Match King. Aiming here and that, well that was the first shot I fired and then I was like, oh, I need to come up 1.6. So I came up 1.6, fired a 10 round group then and that's that. So a little bit more of a vertical string. Uh, every shot I, I fired felt really nice. So is what it is. It's just the natural dispersion of this. And then that measured out to be about 1.38 minutes, so about 1.4. And then this was the AAC 168. These one, two, three were the first three that I was saying like, oh man, those are like one whole groups. And then four started to open up. And then that's why uh, I'm an advocate of 10 round groups. 
even with a bolt gun, but especially a gasser, you're just working with way more uh, variability, uh, not just in velocity, but also the precision aspect and how well it can group. And so uh, my buddy, Mark Smith, JBS Training Group, he, I, I don't know if he made it up or got it from someone else, but I heard it from him. It says five rounds gives you the chorus, but 10 rounds gives you the song. And I really do believe that. Now, if you have a bolt gun and you're stacking five rounds on top of each other, like, all right, well, let me see if I fire 10. Yeah, it's statistically uh, more valid, but you don't necessarily have to do that per se to be like, well, I'm gonna check my zero. Uh, with the gassers, if I just did a three round group and I was like, oh yeah, this thing's like quarter minute all day, definitely not. So I'd say it's an average between these two types of ammo with the 308 barrel, about a minute and a half. Now, this is where people will say, what are you expecting or what do you want for uh, like a LMT, like a precision AR-10 rifle. What are you expecting out of it? And honestly, like one minute is kind of like what I want. But I have, I, I personally, I'm not saying it doesn't exist because they do. But personally, I haven't seen a lot of like true one minute average AR-10s without like high dollar or like custom barrels. I do believe that once I get those custom barrels for this, it would be a pretty consistently average one minute, maybe hopefully less, uh, AR-10 and I'm good with that but for about a minute and a half like for what I think of this rifle more as it kind of fills the role I would like it to be around that one inch but uh, for the uh, I'm sorry for, for the minute and a half that I'm getting with this uh, I think it's fine now I wouldn't be like doing like PRS with this gun or NRL Hunter because it's just like it's the group isn't as tight as I want it to be uh, so just understand the target sizes that you're working with and how that translates to distance down range. And that doesn't even show the muzzle velocity fluctuation. So at distance, if I'm really trying to push this thing, I'm going to be over the plate, under the plate, all around the plate. Like it's just going to be bad, especially on a small, like two minute plate that I'm shooting at at distance. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Now I do recall that the 308 barrel that we shot at hundred meters, uh, for the testing, uh, I think that one had to be within, if I recall, I think it had to be within 1.1 inch average and it, and it did that. Um, I don't know, I've got a couple hundred rounds on both these barrels, but that, that ain't anything. So yeah, we're just gonna keep rolling with it. I kind of tested it three times with the 175s because after the initial two, the first 10 round group with the 175s and then another 10 round group with the 168s, uh, I had like nine rounds in that box. I was like, I'm gonna just shoot another, I'm gonna shoot a nine round group and see what happens. And that nine round group ended up being nasty, like in a good way. And that's it right there. You guys can see that. About a half minute. What the hell? All right. Because the first group was like 1.38 minutes uh, with the 175. And this one was like a half minute, roughly. Uh, so then I fired another 10, but it opened up because I found like I was trying some different pressures as well and so I was trying to do everything consistently but then I was like mm, it's just not lining up super great and I believe that was this so I did it again with the 175s first shot landed to the right I was like okay I'm just gonna chalk that up to me and then the next nine were in there um, and then I just did it again with another 10 rounds of 175 first shot went to the right as well which is strange but i'm just gonna say it was me and then the nine rounds stacked in there so i'm gonna exclude that and that's shooting really tight i love that okay so did the ammo testing uh at 100 yards with this i decided to zero it up to the 175 smks from federal uh using my applied ballistics kestrel wants me to validate at 690 i got a kyl plate at 630 though so Good enough. I'm gonna go with the big size target because the extreme spread on this ammo is about 50 feet a second and Like I said earlier pretty much kind of a rule of thumb is about every 10 feet a second swing You'll see a approximately a 0.1 shift uh, in terms of elevation at truing distance So with a 50 feet a second extreme spread don't be surprised at truing range if I if I were to see about a 0.5 difference in elevation so that's why it's important to shoot groups at distance. Uh, I shot a couple on these targets because the winds kept switching up. So, or shot a couple rounds on this target that you're about to see because uh, the winds kept changing a little bit. So I kind of wanted to make sure, you know, things were at least somewhat on. 
Um, and I came down about two tenths because some were hitting, some were going over the top. So I came down two tenths to kind of grab that average and bring it down. So we're going to roll and see where that goes. And from here, let me, yep. there we go. Now we're filming. All right. All right, you up, Cameron? I'm going to go center again, see what happens. Yeah. Off the right, I see it. Alright, three for three there. Alright, motivation's looking pretty good. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty centered up. Yep. Alright. Yeah, all right, cool. So I'm happy with that for the truing. I'm gonna bring it into a closer. Yeah, I feel it. I'm gonna go to a closer target. Man, this wind is bad. And this velocity is only 2420. There's a little slug going down range, <laughs> but cool. So we're gonna keep pushing this out and in the rest of the video then you'll eventually see some 6.5 stuff at distance, but this is where it's important to know your ammo. Uh, the capabilities of the ammunition, one in terms of group size and two, the velocity swing in terms of ES or SDs. Uh, so that gives you an idea of what you can realistically engage for targets with this weapon system and that ammo. So for me, I would not be trying to do PRS with this gun on like one MOA size plates. It's not realistic, um, especially at further distances. I wouldn't even do it like at 100 with some of the groups because some of them would be over an inch. Some got down to a half inch, but some would be over. So uh, yeah. All right, guys, we're going to do the <coughs> uh, Eagle Eye 6.5 Creedmoor here, the 140 grain. Uh, I didn't, I forgot on the 308 to test the repeatability of zero with removing the barrel and putting it back in. So I'm going to do that with the 6.5 uh, on whichever ammo I think is grouping the tightest just so I can have a better idea if it's actually shifting or not. Uh, I'm not going to fully take it out of the entire rifle because I have to remove the Arca again. I'm just going to do what I need to do, loosen it, and then pull the barrel out until it contacts the screw and then put it back in. Essentially, it doesn't matter because either at that point it's just floating in a handguard. Put it back in, torque it down, and then I'll see if it uh, does its thing. But right now I'm going to fire uh, 10 rounds of the Eagle Eye 140 Burgers, and we'll see how this does. Shot pretty good. So the first 10 rounds that I actually fired in a previous video that I'm gonna delete it obviously, but the group was pretty bad and the muzzle device itself came loose in turn making the suppressor loose. So we torqued the muzzle device back on and then uh, put the suppressor back on and now I shot another 10. Now it's doing pretty well. Uh, you guys will see it when I show you. The average of that was 25.35, minimum 25.23, max 25.56. So, a, let's see, 25, about a 30-ish or so uh, extreme spread, so not, not too bad. All right, so I like the way that the Eagle Eye grouped, so I'm actually gonna just, all right, I removed the barrel uh, and by remove, I mean, it was already contacting. So I, I took, loosened it up and then moved the barrel and it came out about an inch and then I put it back in <laughs> and then, uh, torqued everything back down. Now I'm going to fire a 10 round group and see if the, uh, if it pretty much holds zero for the most part. All right.
Okay. So within about a tenth. Uh, so my first 10 round group was about, let me see, about 0.1 low of where I was aiming and 0.1 to the right. And then I just shot this 10 round group after reinstalling the barrel and it's pretty much point of aim, point of impact, favoring maybe 0.1 to the right. So within about a 10th. That's pretty reasonable in my opinion for like a quick change barrel or whatever if it's coming back within about a 10th. Um, obviously I would do this numerous times and really test it, but uh, I, it, this at least gives you an idea. So hopefully you guys thought that was cool. Let's do the next ammo. All right, guys, now we got the Hornady 140 ELD match, 10 rounds, and we're gonna see how it does. I don't really like that group to be honest. Um, also, I typically try to avoid polymer tipped ammo in gas guns anyways, um, but we still got the AAC 140 Sierra Match Kings to try out next. But this, this was an average of 2563, minimum 2554, max 2578. Uh, so about a 20, what is that, 24 spread, something like that. Uh, of an ES, so pretty good, but I don't like how it grouped. Uh, you guys will see how it goes, but I'm gonna let this cool for a minute and then we'll try the AC. <coughs> okay, so now we got the AAC 140 Sierra Match Kings. Let's see how this goes. Not too bad, better than the Hornady. All right, but not as good as the Eagle Eye. All right, so average 24.85. Uh, min was, wait, that's pretty slow. Okay, so that's slow. Uh, average 24.74, max 25.03. So about a 28 or so feet a second spread. Not too bad. Uh, groups were okay, you guys will see it. What I'm probably gonna do is, <coughs> finish off the box of the Hornady and this AAC. So I'll do another 10 rounder of the Hornady and another 10 rounder of this AAC, uh, just for more consistent data, I guess, more statistical average. So, cool. Okay guys, so did the groupings with the 6.5 barrel. Uh, I'm about to show you them here. Uh, pretty happy with that Eagle Eye, man. That Eagle Eye was freaking awesome. Uh, so I'll show you these. This first paper on the right is going to be the eagle eye, and then we'll talk about the rest. So, all right, so right here, eagle eye. First five rounds, I fired just to make sure it was somewhat zeroed before doing all the testing and whatnot that was there. And then I fired a 10 round group, and it was this, uh, and I was like, oh, oh no. And then I looked, and I was like, Oh no, my muzzle brake is loose, and so the suppressor's loose too, and I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> torqued it back down, and then fired a 10 round group, and without Ryan errors, that's the Eagle Eye, uh, 10 rounds, just freaking hammered. That was amazing. Love that. Uh, so Eagle Eye, shout out. <laughs> that's good stuff. Uh, so, don't include that group, because that was user error uh stuff came loose so 
Eagle Eye was good. Uh, consistent ejection pattern, even with all of them. But let's go to the middle paper. This is with the Hornady 140 ELD match. Uh, I usually try and avoid polymer tipped ammo uh, in gassers. Sometimes they can snap the tips off on the feed lips or cause malfunctions. But I didn't have any malfunction issues, but it didn't group all that well. This was the, uh, I don't remember if I was aiming here or here. I think I was aiming, honestly, I don't remember where I was aiming, but this was the first 10 round group with the Hornady 140. Not terrible, probably about 1.4, 1.5 if I were to guess. Uh, then I moved over to the AAC. I'll come back to that group. I moved over to the AAC, which is right here. Um, this was the first 10 round group that I fired. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this was the first 10 round group right here. Yeah, that was it. I fired this 10 round group. Oh, wait, 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 nope. <laughs> I remembered. First 10 round group right there. So that was pretty solid, right? And I was like, man, that's that's pretty good. But the downside was it was really slow, uh, uh, slower than the other ammo as well. And I could even see that in the ejection pattern. It was instead of like 3.30, it was like four o'clock. Uh, but I was like, all right, well, I wanna get a more statistical average. So I'll fire the last 10 rounds I have the Hornady and then the last 10 rounds of the AC. So back to the Hornady. This was the last, I aimed here and this was the last, 10 rounds seems to be like a little poi shift there for whatever reason maybe it was just me but either way the group size is about the same i was like eh, i'm not super crazy about the hornady so then i fired the last 10 of the aac and that was this group and you can take a guess of what happened the muzzle device came loose again so <laughs> there we go and so ignore that group because that was starting to drop low with the muzzle device unscrewing and thus the suppressor coming loose. Luckily, no baffle strikes or anything like that. Uh, however, this is also a good educational point. I've seen this numerous times in classes over the years and whatnot. If you start seeing low impacts or groups just sporadically go haywire, it's a good sign, especially the low shots that your muzzle break or suppressor is loose. But yeah, Eagle Eye stacks. Uh, unfortunately, the only ammo I have left is the Hornady, uh, which doesn't seem to really do really well out of this rifle but we're going to run with that for the truing event and see how that goes then i'll give an outro and i'll get out of here okay so huh? gonna i'm on the camera all right <laughs> all right so we're going to validate this uh hornady stuff uh, 905 is where I'm going to shoot this at. Uh, going to hold straight up. I shot some rounds at it earlier. Uh, things were tracking, but just so I can get you some trigger cam footage of it, I'm going to get off there. All right. Let's see. So it wants 87. Impact. All right. I'm going to go to the Ipsic to the right. Maybe a tenth left. Impact. Perfect wind. Oh, dead center. I'm gonna... I don't know. I'm gonna send the same thing. Oh, wind must have picked up a little bit there. Those first two were beautiful though. Uh, drilled those center but the elevation the wind must have picked up like one mile an hour if that and just threw it off the edge um but the elevation i was pretty happy with given the how this ammo groups anyways so it might not have even been wind it could also be it probably was wind but it could possibly be how the, the dispersion of the ammo was at 100 yards anyways uh based on the group size of it and that target the ipsic is only 0.3 wide so 0.3 is about a minute and the ammo wasn't even grouping a minute so in terms of that that could have been where some of that was uh coming from but possibly some wind change as well who knows anyways the elevation was fine with it though so i'm not going to mess with it given the average of the dispersion i was pretty satisfied with that so got some trigger cam footage there we got some rounds left and uh try something closer like the 400 I think it was something like that so let's see Is that what you're going for? yeah the what was it 
yeah, 485. I'm gonna go for that target just to make sure things are tracking. All right, guys, so like I said, 485, IPSC. It's gonna hold straight up. Oh, it would help the chamber around. Uh, I think that hit it, it ricocheted off the plate. Do you see that? Yeah, I do. Hit the edge. So that's a common sign. If you see that, you're like, I didn't hear anything, but what was that? It just touched the side. Yeah. The ammo does not group super well. Almost 500 uh, yards. Yeah. I was No, it's not worth it because it's not even grouping that well. So that's, that's the importance, guys, of knowing the limitations of the ammo, how the gun groups with that ammo, and then obviously velocity s swings as you get to deeper distances and understanding what the capabilities of a weapon system is. But for this, this was fine. Um, now, if it had been eagle eye ammo, like I would probably be all up on this stuff for a decent amount of distance because that stuff was grouping really well and it was pretty consistent. Um, but is what it is, so hopefully you got a kick out of that. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up here because I've been here all day. Wasn't super crazy for you guys, but I'm gonna go ahead, give you guys an outro, and then wrap it up. Okay guys, so that wraps all this up. Uh, I know it was kind of winged and might not be as in depth as kind of the style of the Accuracy International was. It's more just footage of me, and there's a little bit of trigger cam footage uh, based on how I am imagining that I'm gonna be editing this. Uh, but really the thing was, I just wanna show you guys the LMT in action get you an idea on the average groupings with different types of ammunition, uh, and then understanding the muzzle velocity and the mainly the extreme spread or SDs and how that can translate to targets at distance, and then group size of that ammo and how that can translate to the size of a target you're trying to engage, and really just give you an overall idea. And if you really think about it and crunch the numbers, you can see, oh, well, maybe this isn't practical for this distance. So where do I see this rifle fitting into? Currently, without the custom barrels, um, and off the shelf, with the 308 at least, some Federal 175s, uh, like, I, like you guys saw, some groups were half minute with that, and then some were like 1.3, 1.4, and anywhere in between. Uh, and then the AAC was a little sporadic but decent it was similar but not a, it didn't group as tight um but then the three oh the i'm sorry the six fives the eagle eye just stacked like i, I love the eagle eye ammo <coughs> the eagle eye was great uh the hornady not a fan of it again i try to avoid polymer tipped ammo in a gas gun anyways um the ac wasn't bad it grouped pre pretty okay uh not as good as the eagle eye but better than the hornady uh, but it was really slow um, so the last trigger cam footage that you probably saw of that target, the uh, Ipsic one, like just the group size was basically encompassing that whole size of target. Um, and that was only 485 yards, the 6.5. So with the 308, going back to that, a little bit of a tangent there, going, the 308 with the, the current barrel and 175s from Federal, I would say, you know, maybe like a DMR rifle. I, I don't know if I would call this a precision rifle, uh, but definitely I would say a, a DMR roll. Um, but I wouldn't be trying to shoot like one minute size targets. Like someone's poking their head out at like 700. I'm not gonna be, unless I have to take the shot, but if it's my choice, I'm not gonna take that shot at 700 yards on an, a, a dog target or a, a low exposed shot at like 700 yards with the 308 or even the 6.5 barrel. Um, it just doesn't group well enough. Uh, to do that kind of role. But it, it's understanding the role of the weapon system, right? So like a bolt gun, sure, yeah. Shoot small targets all day long with that stuff. Um, but there is still realms that, of reality that you gotta deal with with that stuff too. But uh, the 6.5 with Eagle Eye ammo, yeah, I would definitely <coughs> push this uh, out some. So the, uh, mm, it wasn't Eagle Eye that I had for the Ipsic at 905. You guys probably saw me doing the triple taps. I don't know if I'll throw that in this video, but it, 
it is going to be going on Instagram. I don't know. I'll see. But I was triple tapping at 905 on the square, and then there's an Ipsic, like a C zone to the right. Um, that C zone uh, held 0.1 left for wind, and good wind call. You can see it was going up and down the plate, and then the last two shots just went off the right. But that was with the uh, Hornady ammo as well. So then based on that natural group size, like that plate was only 0.3 wide, the group size itself, some of those rounds would have gone off. Yeah, maybe it picked up like a mile an hour possibly, but even if everything was perfect, the group size itself is bigger than the, the width of the target. Uh, 0.3 is about a minute. But overall, enough about that. I think you guys got the gist of it. I think, what are my thoughts on the rifle? I love this rifle, honestly. I'm, I'm gonna be even more excited once I get custom made barrels for this. Um, I definitely see it as a DMR setup. It weighs in at about, at, well, with the 308 barrel that was on it, it was about 14 and a half pounds. With a 6.5, it's probably 14 and a half to 15, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, but I definitely think it's a def definitely a viable weapon system to go with. The quick change barrel is sick. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about, well, does a return to zero in case I have to take this shot out of a backpack? Like, I mean, it fits in my little bag with the, 16 inch barrel on it and the suppressor pretty well but even when the ammo or with the 6.5 repeatability test that i checked it was within 0.1 i think that's very reasonable for a lot of these quick change barrels and stuff like that so if you're in the market for a solid ar-10 obviously the lmt is a definitely a viable option as well as you know knights as well as uh, jp those are pretty solid as well Seekins, uh I wasn't super happy with my Seekins, but I know a lot of people that are happy with their Seekins, so Seekins is definitely a reputable one as well. Um, yeah, so super nonchalant video here and very much winged, but hopefully it was some enjoyment for you guys while you're just drinking some coffee or bourbon or whatever your choice is or combining the two. But uh, see you guys in the next video. Thanks.